All right, now that was the obvious problem tank with the oil. This is less obvious. We just noticed that the vacuum was going really slow. The material wasn't transferring well. This is another one of those tanks that here at Polar, we're going to take a look inside. Every day, we're going to take the valve part. But, but for here, for the camera, we're going to cut back into this one again, plus Keith's having fun with it, and see exactly why this thing's going so slow. All right, cut a nice big hole in this one, Keith. I'm getting out of your way. The 30 and 50 pound cylinders all have the exact same dip tube configuration. And this tank here could have been in service for the last eight years, last 15 years. It, it's just representative of all the different tanks that are out there moving around. Some of the tanks, like that last one that we just cut into, that tank was only five years old. It had only been in service for five years. This one's a little bit older. And what really led us to worry about the integrity of the inside of the tank or the condition of the valve wasn't its appearance, but it was its performance. And we measure all of that when we're doing the evacuation of the tanks and making sure that they're in a deep vacuum. All right, Keith, Keith's evidently got a little bit more experience cutting cylinders apart. So he's cutting a little bigger hole. And uh, oh, that's, that's a good wide hole, Keith. And I, I can start to see some stuff flying around in there. It looks like a, either a shriveled dip tube or... But the, you know, I, I wouldn't suggest anybody do this at home or cut a cylinder open. These things are real expensive. We try to get as much life out of them as we can. We're, we're no different than anybody else. But this is a good opportunity for everybody to look inside a tank and see exactly what's going on. Here's the inside of the tank. The first obvious problem with this tank, no dip tube. Let me get that light back in here. Fellas, let me see that light. All right, turn that on for me. Take a look at that dip tube. <laughs> see that little string of plastic back there? That's our dip tube. Not a whole lot going through that dip tube. Most of the metal corrosion you see in there is just the drippings from the side of the tank. That right there is our dip tube, and that's what's slowing down our tank from being able to get a good vacuum. So, again, there's no apparent exterior problem with the tank. Valves, handles, everything looks great from the outside. It's even fairly clean for an old tank that's been in service for this long. And this tank's been around since 92. But the real problem in this tank was the dip tube. And you can see with no dip tube, that port, the plastic, is all shriveled up and filled up the cavity inside that passageway. So there's no way for gas to get in or out efficiently, and there's very little way to pull a vacuum on it. All right. As you can see, it's not the obvious appearance of the tank that always has an impact on the performance. As a matter of fact, it very rarely does. But when we have the opportunity to get inside these tanks, and we do 12,000 of these a year, this is the kind of example you see. There's a dip tube right there. It's all rotted. The handles are in great shape, so the above the cylinder appearance is, is perfect. It's terrific. But the below the cylinder, where the actual activity is, you can see there's no passageway for that gas to move. Other valves have other problems. The threaded ports are destroyed and damaged, so they don't hold a seal and they leak. We repair and replace all of those. Some of the other ones include dip tubes that, have, that are metal that have snapped off internally. And that valve right there won't allow material to pass easily as well. But again, these are all less than obvious because they, the, 
the valve itself looks good. It's underneath part, the, the less exposed part, the unexposed part that we can't see. So even this one here, some of the things that we look for when we inspect these valves are things like this um, O-ring that's set up inside here. You can see that that O-ring right in the middle, it's intact on this one, so it'll pass its inspection. But every one of these cylinders gets inspected to make sure that that O-ring is in good shape. So that whether it's the obvious missing valve or the less than obvious valve in good shape but really slow performer, every cylinder goes through some type of inspection to make sure that not just the outward appearance of the tank but the inward operation and functional use of that cylinder is in perfect shape. All right. Well, you saw what the inside of the tank looks like. The final step in getting this entire process up and running is getting the outside of the tank in good shape as well. So every cylinder that come in, comes in has graffiti, it has labels, you can see the different plaques that are left on the tank, and you can see the different individual company labels that are left there. We have to remove all of this stuff before it can be used again because the DOT requires that every cylinder have proper information and labeling on it. So if this tank was in, used for R22 recovery before and the next person wants to use it for 404, we have to make sure that those labels are off and they're generic and clean and safe so that they can use the cylinder another time. So every cylinder gets wiped down. All the graffiti will get removed. It's really important. It's legally required by DOT. So by the time a tank has reached this point, it's already been through that inspection. And no, we don't cut every cylinder apart. We go through a lot of cylinders, waste a lot of money. But in this case, the cylinder's already been vacuumed. It's already been evacuated and cleaned. The outward appearance is in good shape. The handle's in good shape, safe. The foot ring's in good shape, it's safe. So the collar's gonna protect the valve. There's no floats or plugs. And now the, the graffiti gone, it's, now it's in DOT compliance from a visual perspective. Now the next step, we're gonna bag this up. That bag will protect the valve for the next phase, which is right up on that line over there. I'll bring you over there now. So all of these cylinders have already passed through that process. Valves have been inspected, dip tubes have been inspected, graffiti's been removed. These aren't, these aren't pretty yet, but they're, they're safe and they're compliant. So now they're going to go through the paint line. They've also been DOT inspected or DOT approved for the certification date. And we'll show you a finish tank, exactly what they need to look like when they go out the door. So by the time a cylinder is finished, it's internal and it's external cleaning process. It comes over here, comes off the line. You can see that every single cylinder is uniformed. They're all the same color. They've got their inspection certification that tells us who did the testing for the tank to do the final visual. It's got its stamp date. So it doesn't matter whether it's an Amtral, a Worthington, or a Manchester tank. It doesn't matter if it's a Seadoo or a Cavagna valve. Every single valve and cylinder is finished to uniformity. The sleeve on the outside has all of the safety information on it, first aid, what to do in case of an emergency. It's got all of the placard information on it so that the DOT knows exactly what's inside the tank in case anything ever happens to it on the road. The tanks, they don't get shipped like this when they come from here. The tanks will actually get shipped in a box. There's a reason we ship them in the box, which is right behind you. And that box of cylinders is totally uniform and built so that in case anything happens to it while it's traveling on the road, it's going to be fine and safe. Cylinders are stacked vertically. Because they're not a flammable tank and it's non-flammable gas, they can be stacked horizontally like this. With the stack underneath, all of these cylinders are safe that are in here. They're all placarded. They're all labeled. They're ready to roll out the door. 
and they're ready to look better and perform better than any cylinder that's out there in the market.